Hello and welcome to Faith Works Designs. I'm Faith and I just wanted to explain this is the reason why I have not had a video in a month. And then this happened. This taco palooza. So this week there's just going to be a mess in the background and it's just going to have to not bother me. <laughs> this week I needed an easy video because it has been a while since I've made one. Um, I've had a lot of work coming up which is why I wanted to make this video on how to make start your business and let it be successful. Um, my business started at a time when I didn't want to be in business. I had two small children at the time, two older ones, two small ones. We There's a gap. And I was highly pregnant with our fifth child and the city decided to do some stuff. And anyway, it forced me to have to get a job. And I was six and a half months pregnant. Nobody was going to hire me and I wanted to be home with my kids. So I took the skills that I had and I figured I would start my own business and that way I could kind of be my own boss, be at home with my kids and use the skills that I have to be able to do that. So very first step, I was broke as a joke. So what I did was the best decision that I did was I used, I looked around at what I had. I've been quilting for years, I've been sewing for years. I had fabric galore from different things. I said, okay, I am not going to spend a dime and I'm going to try and make this happen. Now, most people when they start a business, that's the very first thing they want to do is take every dime that they've got and they want to go to the craft store and they want to get as many things as physically possible. Don't do that. If you want to make a profit in your first year, what you're going to have to do is make your capital. Don't take from your husband's finances or, or your spouse or significant other's finances do it yourself. If, if you're wanting to start a craft business and it's something that you have been doing for years and you just never really put it into practice or it's, not, it's you want to create a side job or something like that, you want to use what you've got at home. Now what I did because I was so broke, I went ahead and I used every scrap of fabric I had. Uh, my very first product that I had was my reusable swiffer pads and hopefully I'll be able to find a picture and post them here. Um, I wanted to do those because I knew they would sell. Um, it's around about the time where people wanting to reuse things and it just it worked out really perfectly. So I made as many as I could with the materials I had on hand. I just happened to have some velcro, um, what else, batting, stuff like that for my quilts. I just happened to have all of that. So I made 10 of those and then I sold those and then I made 10 more and sold those and so on and it just kind of my business just kind of boomed from that. Now, another thing people make a mistake in is advertising. They want to start um, putting money into that right away. I want to get a website and I want to pay, you know, social media to put my stuff, Etsy, all of that. You want to use social media, it is your friend. And so are your friends. And what I did was I went on uh, social media and I just kind of started putting all of my stuff on there. Yard sale sites. Uh, Facebook groups, all of that, I started posting my stuff on there. And it was all free, so I didn't have to pay a dime in having to pay for ads or anything like that. Making smart decisions like that, those two smart decisions, I ended up making a profit that year. We saved our house, we paid off our, our debt, still bitter. Making those two smart decisions is what really got my business going full steam ahead. Now I did take a pause because I had a baby so it was a little harder to get things done but when I got started again I did the same exact thing. I used what I had on hand and then I kind of used um, social media as a, a median to get my stuff out there. Now I also make quilts, uh, I make purses, I make all kinds of stuff. You guys have seen what all I make. So what I did was I used social media. And in order for a person to get a hold of me, I needed some avenue other than Facebook Messenger. So I ended up creating my own Facebook page. And on there, every day when I would make something, I would post it on there. And then as people would find me, they'd like my page or I'd ask them to like my page. So that when I posted things and they're just scrolling through their feed, they would see my item. Now, at some point, it kind of went up, 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 and then just kind of like, so that's when you see if you see that your traffic is kind of like slowing down a little bit now's another time that I went and I started making a lot of cloth diaper items and I made cloth diapers for my kids 
Um, so I thought, okay, well, where can I sell these items at? Are there any specific pages that I can go on and I can look and see if I can sell my stuff there? So, um, specifically, I was selling cloth diaper pods. I have a pattern that I sell. Um, I'll link it down below. Um, I sold those, and those were really popular at the time. So, I went on, uh, like, cloth diaper auction sites or um, WAM pages, work from home moms, because you can hear my kids in the background. Uh, I went on pages like that that kind of had auctions. Because of that, and again, it's gonna it's gonna depend on what your particular interest is. But you gotta like really think outside of the box. Um, I went on those two pages, and I just made like five cloth diaper pods. Um, and on that site, you're not allowed to put your business name or logo or whatever. So what happened was a lot of people in the comment section, as they were bidding on it, would say, "Can I get your shop info? Can I get your shop info?" So, in doing so, they might not have bought that particular product, but they liked my page, and in the future, they ended up being a customer. Um, and I got a lot more people on my page because of doing things like that. So, again, it's all free. I used my brain <laughs> as hard as I could because I didn't want to pay for the extra ad revenue or, or anything like that. I wanted everything to be free, so I kept thinking every time I would change what I was doing, um, quilts, I looked on quilt pages, uh, my baby items, I looked for baby pages. Um, when I started my YouTube channel, I started sharing my videos on um, relatable page, pages, like uh, if it was the cloth diaper stuff, I would show, show it on a cloth diaper and just kind of share your link around. Use your friends. Ask your friends to share your stuff on Facebook for you. Um, I have two on my Facebook page that faithfully share my FaithWorks designs. Um, every time I post something, they share it for me. And so creating that network, people are seeing that and the more people that share, the better. Now, giveaways. Let's talk about that real quick. Everybody, when they start a business, Letting go of anything is really, really hard. But at the same time, you don't want to go nuts. So find a happy medium. Um, giveaways I found really help boost my page a lot. But you don't want to get caught up in constantly having to do giveaways to get people to your page. It takes away from your earnings, which you don't want to do. Um, I would normally pick like something like a, a bag of some sort and then I would give myself a month and I'd ask people to share. Uh, more importantly, I got smart. <laughs> As I've been in business, I've gotten smarter and smarter. So I said, take a picture of the thing that you bought from me and you, that will give you an entry into the giveaway. That way they had an entry for sharing, an entry for showing what they had bought, and then just like for liking the page or something like that. And that way your page and your business will get out there. Now another way that I created a lot of friendships um, that help bring in business was um, I was doing a lot of business and having to ship things out. Well I ended up having um, this lady open a post office right in my area which was a godsend because this town is small and it's got one little post office and it was just waiting in line for 30 minutes. It takes away from your um, your business because you're constantly standing in line. So make sure that you have a way that you can ship things out quickly. Either having your uh, postmaster come and pick them up or being able to drop them off quickly, something like that. Check into that because it'll save you a lot of time. I got lucky enough that she opened up her post office and she was seeing the items that I was shipping out and she was and it was at the beginning of the pandemic and she's like can you make us some masks and I was like okay sure so we ended up making a lot of oh my gosh I think I've made like over 4,000 masks now I am so tired of making masks anyway that friendship and that business she made a lot of money last year yeah last year um, just off of masks and she said hey you make a lot of really neat stuff. What do you think about having a section in the store? Okay. I got a section in a store because of the friendships that I made as I was dropping off my materials um, just to shipping. So if you have a small shipping place, uh, maybe a smaller post office and they sell like stuff on the side, just ask, hey, do you do anything on consignment? Um, and then, you know, just get to know them first. And then maybe they'll let you have a spot in the store. Um, another part of that is friendships online. 
Now, um, I make a lot of stuff <laughs> and I found a lot of online places to buy my fabric from because again, I love supporting small business because I am a small business and I appreciate when people support me as well. So, I found another uh, site, um, several of them, oh my goodness, so many. And I would take their fabric and I would make something with it and then I would share it on their page. That does two things. One, the person that owns the page sees my product and sees what I've made with their product. She saw the products that I was making with her fabric and she saw how nice they were and she asked me to be a rep for her company which is Dazzled Custom Fabrics. Um, I think I've got it like a month and a half left with them. I've used the code FAITHWORKS10 on their website. I'll leave all of this stuff down below. Um, if you use their website, you can actually get 10% off your order for me being a rep. So sharing my products that I've made with their fabrics has actually made a friendship there so that I can get a percentage off of my fabric, which I need because every dime you can save, the better your business is going to go. I put it on a bunch of like different um, fabric places that I got fabric from. Whenever I would get the fabric in, I would make something on it and then I would put it on their page. And believe it or not, there's people that are on those pages that don't sew. So they saw my items and then they wanted to buy them. So uh, again, it's all thinking outside the box so that you're not paying for advertisement. You don't want to pay for advertisements unless you have to. Eventually, I, to this day, don't have a website. All of my stuff is custom, and I'm so busy, I don't have time off. So, <laughs> uh, and that's a good thing. It keeps me busy, keeps money coming in, and helps me stay home with my kids. Um, but I don't want to pay anything in more than I have to. Now, let's talk taxes for like a whole minute, because the first year, I didn't make enough to actually, between what I spent versus what I made, I didn't make enough because it was towards the end of the year. Um, but the next year I made enough, I had to pay taxes. And some people do their taxes monthly. Some people just wait till the end of the year. It, it's whatever works best for you. But here's what I'm going to suggest to you. Whatever you spend for your business, it doesn't matter if it's a table, if it's so, especially a sewing machine, I get to deduct this bad boy this year bad girl. You're a good girl, but that's beside the point. I get to deduct all of this. Keep your receipts. No matter what, no matter what you spent. If you've got to redo your craft room, like all of this stuff up here that I've spent money on um, so that I can be orga more organized in my room, I've saved those receipts and I've deducted all of that. You want as many deductions as physically possible because you Again, the more money you make, the more taxes you're going to have to pay. So keep that in mind. My tax guy, when I came in two years ago, looked at my taxes and went, Oh my gosh, you made a huge profit considering um, it was your first year. I said, Yeah, I tried, again, not paying for any kind of advertisements, um, making really, really smart decisions. With everything that I did made me a profit. That's why it's so important to make smart decisions with everything that you do when you're first starting your business. Because the first year I made a good profit, the next year my profit doubled. It's making really, really good smart decisions when you're doing it so that you can make a profit. Because that's, and I hate to be like that, but you know, gotta pay the bills. So <laughs> make smart decisions so that you can actually make a profit. Now, let's talk about in with friendship is customer service. Now, one of the pet peeves of a lot of people is customer service. I hated being in customer service because people are just, can be rude sometimes. With my customer service, I said, I, I'm going to put it out there, I am a Christian and I believe that I should treat others the way that I want to be treated. So, if I'm doing something for someone and say it breaks, I have decided that if it is, you know, my fault, then I'm going to take care of it and I'm going to have them ship it, either ship it back to me or make another one and ship it back out to them. Whatever financially is more responsible, that's what I'm going to end up doing. Now, when you create your Facebook page, you have to have that on your page somewhere. If they want to pay for tracking, tracking, oh my gosh. Pay for tracking. I cannot tell you this last year with all of the craziness that's been going on. 
pay for tracking because it saved my life so many times. I could say, here's the tracking. It says it's, it's gone. It's out of my hands. It needs to be on your page. Once it's out of my hands, it is not my responsibility anymore. Now, you can help start a case with the post office so that you guys can find it, but um, just spending a tiny bit extra on tracking will save you a lot of headache later on. Trust me. The different things that you need to have on your Facebook page are you do, you do, do, you do, do, you do add tracking to, to your shipping. Um, what length of time are you willing to take something back? Say a strap breaks two months from now, are you going to still recover that? You need to make these decisions because it's going to come up. Um, there's going to be inevitably somebody that's going to want something. I'll give you an example. Um, deposits. That's another thing. A very smart thing to do when you're starting your business. Do not do orders without a deposit. Do not take an order without a deposit. I have been burnt a couple times and it has cost me a lot of money. If you want to make a profit in your first year, do not take orders without a deposit of some sort. I like having my things paid for up front now. I've been in business long enough that people that come to me on a regular basis know me and they know that I'm going to ship their item off to them. So I make them pay up front now. But I used to do deposits because some things are kind of expensive and I get it. You know, you can't afford it. So I would take deposits and there's an option if you have PayPal or something like that that you can do payments on it. Um, but I would not do anything without a deposit because I've been burnt. You need to have that on your Facebook page as well. There will be no refunds on your deposits. It needs to be somewhere on your page or website. Um, because inevitably there are just some people that start out wanting something and then they get down the road and they get a little broke before the item is finished and they want you to kind of eat it <laughs> so and they want their money back keep that in mind it's going to happen they're just those people it happens so make sure that you have what everything listed out on your website um, just think on those things um, your returns uh, shipping things like that um, a lot of people don't know about shipping. I know there's a lot of different websites that you can kind of weigh things and you can use PayPal to be able to ship things out. Um, I don't have any options for those for you guys because I've been very, very blessed uh, by my post office here that just kind of mails everything out for me. I just drop it off and say hey and, you know, walk out the door again if I'm in a hurry. So those are just a couple of things that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, the first year or so, it'll feel like you're just spending money. <laughs> It'll feel like you're just working yourself to death. Another thing is research. Um, research is going to be really important because in my area, I didn't know what was going to sell and what wasn't. So instead of making a hundred Swiffer pads, I made 10 and just kind of saw, okay, well, are they going to sell? Or are they not going to sell? Um, that's going to be really important for your bottom line because if you make a hundred bows or something and they don't sell, you're out all of that money and time. So what I would do is do your research. Go online, try and sell a few, see if they sell well. And if they and if they are responding to well, then go for it. Uh, another thing that I have to do on a constant basis is keep up with what's popular. Um, what cartoons, what TV shows, things like that, um, what, what's popular so that I know what fabric to buy. I never know what's popular anymore. I don't watch like a whole lot of TV, so I never know <laughs> what's popular. So make sure that you check that out and just kind of look around different websites and see what pe shows people are into and things like that. Um, if you're buying fabric, um, here's what I would do to begin with. Um, I would buy like a yard at a time and make sure that you buy it on sale. Um, now that I'm a little more into it and I've gotten more experience and more customers and into it more, I've realized that I need to buy at, le at least two yards of something because inevitably I'm going to run out. Um, enough, There are enough customers and enough people that like whatever it is I'm buying that I'm going to need more than two. So I did want to show you guys real quick this is this kind of goes along with research um, 
you know kind of when I buy fabric I buy something that I know that either a friend or myself would like because if I buy it and neither one of us like it it's not gonna if it doesn't sell I don't have anybody to give it to so, <laughs> um, so I found this fabric and it's by Twisted Needle Textiles I believe they're on Facebook um, and it looks like taco fabric and no I do not have any discount codes and I am so sorry but I will link them down below. Uh, this fabric is just amazing because it looks like, hold on, let me show you. It looks like a taco and it's amazing. It's a taco purse. <laughs> so that's what I mean when I say research. You need to know what's gonna sell because if you buy all of this fabric that nobody wants, then you're out of that money. And it kind of sucks to have that money kind of out there and sitting around. Now, another good thing that I would suggest is taking your fabric, if, if fabric is your thing, ribbon, whatever, there are fabric de-stash pages um, where you can take, say, you've had some fabric and it's just been kind of sitting around and it hasn't sold and nobody likes it or whatever. You can go on those de-stash pages and sell it and then take that money and buy more fabric. Now, I've kind of gotten a routine over the last couple months of keeping an amount of fabric because I'm always buying two yards now I keep the fabric that I have for two or three months give or take and then I sell it and buy more it has to be um, it has to be a revolving door because if I just have fabric sitting there it's not it's not making me money and it's costing me money because it's just sitting there I keep a tally of everything that I've got and everything that I've spent on that fabric so that I know what I need to sell it for and chances are good that I actually make more money by selling it that way so um, another thing that I forgot to touch on is take care of your receipts and know what you're spending um, the very first thing that I did was I am terrible at math and I dislike math greatly so I did not keep up with how much I was spending versus how much I was making eventually it got to the point where I was like okay I'm making good money but I'd make even better money if I made sure that I paid and I think it just hit me because I started buying this really expensive fabric if I'm spending $24 a yard on this fabric and it takes a yard to make uh, a book bag or something that bag needs to be 50 bucks because I have to make money uh, Make sure that when your pricing is right on top, because if you're spending more in materials to make it, plus shipping, then you're not making any money. And that's one of the big mistakes people make is not doing the math and not making sure that they're actually making a profit. They sit at the back at the end of the year and go, oh man, <laughs> I spent a lot of money. I, I have been buying more expensive fabrics lately because I, I feel like everybody's got Joanne fabrics. I want fabrics that people aren't going to have. And so when they scroll through Facebook and they're looking, they go, ooh, I haven't seen that before. You know, that's really cool. It helps make sales that way. So um, that's another thing. Even you're doing ribbons or whatever it is that you're doing, uh, hair bows and stuff. Look around on Facebook and see if you can find a D-stash group. And then you can find some really cool uh, fabrics and ribbons and stuff like that. Um, and just try your best to get some discounts or something so that you can make sure that you make a profit um again just make sure you're doing the math so you know what you're doing that was a quick video i know it was a lot of information it felt like a, a fire hose just kind of like going into your mouth <laughs> uh, when i first started my business i didn't have anybody to help me and i didn't know what to do thankfully god helped me figure out what to do so that i could make it he put me in a position where i had to make really smart decisions and I had my husband backing me up every step of the way so that I made really, really good decisions so that the first, second, third year this year, I will make a profit. And I will make, I doubled my profit the second year making good decisions. Do not get a credit card. <laughs> do not do it. I'm Dave Ramsey all the way. When I get paid and I make money, it stays in my account. I spend from that account to buy the new materials. A portion of that goes into like savings and the rest of it goes back into the business. Don't get a credit card. Spend what you've got. If you're spending more than you're making, then you're not a business. You're doing a very expensive hobby. 
Um, I hope you guys like this video. If you do, you can give it a thumbs up. Or if you want to subscribe and hang around for some actual sewing videos, hopefully next week. I am trying so hard. But it's a good thing because I've been busy making money. So, more smart decisions. Uh, if you have any questions down below, feel free to list those in the comment section. I'll get to those as soon as I can. Um, and you guys just enjoy enjoy starting your business. Take lots of pictures. Don't get discouraged. Just do the best that you can with what you got. Start slow. And then if you see that it's budding, just go for it. It's the best decision that I've ever made because I want to stay home with my kids. And it, it means a lot to me because I had to work when I had my first two kids. Um, I had to work and I missed a lot. And it means so much to me to be able to help my husband financially, but also be able to be here to see all of the milestones or to be sitting at my sewing machine working and having the little ones come up and talk to me. It just, it means the world to me to be able to be here. It's, it's important and they, they need their mommy too. So um, if that's why you're doing this, I hope good luck for you that you will do great. Thanks for joining us here on Faith Works Design. Bye guys.